Hey everyone, it's Irene, the cosplay counselor, your virtual superhero advisor. Now today, I'm gonna be talking to you about a super fun and exciting topic, and that's FAFSA. Uh, you sure? Okay, it's not exactly the most fun topic that you may want to discuss. However, it's an incredibly important one, and Although I don't consider myself a financial aid expert, I have hosted enough financial aid workshops and have seen families kind of stumble through some of these common mistakes. And I wanna make sure that you don't make those mistakes. So today's video is going to be dedicated to mistakes that you should avoid. Now, if you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Are you ready? Let's go. Number one. Be consistent with your name and address. So when you're filling out the FAFSA, you want to make sure that that information is consistent among all your different legal documents. So some of these legal documents include your social security card, your high school transcript, as well as your birth certificate. So it's really important that the name that you have on all three of those documents matches with what you're gonna put on the FAFSA. An example of making sure that your name matches, let's say, your full name is Mary Jane, but you go by MJ at school. You want to make sure that whatever name you have on FAFSA matches those three documents that I had mentioned before. Alternatively, let's say you grew up with a more ethnic name that's a little bit more difficult for people to pronounce, and so you've chosen a more Western name. You just want to make sure that the, whatever name that you're putting on the FAFSA matches whatever legal documents that you have, just so that they can keep track of all of your documents in one place and know that that's you. This becomes a problem when, let's say you put your nickname, but your legal document has your full name. Okay, this becomes a problem when the district or your counselor submits your GPA for a GPA verification and your application doesn't match because our high school transcript records has your full name and your FAFSA application name is your nickname. And so a computer kind of matches the, the information and they're gonna see that they don't match. Students can come and see their counselor or whoever handles the GPA verification to remedy or rectify that particular situation. It's just gonna add a couple of extra unnecessary steps and just delay your process. Do yourself a favor and just make sure right at the beginning that you have everything all consistent. Number two, have students and parents work on the FAFSA together. Now there are circumstances when students can work independent of their parents. However, the vast majority of students will be completing the FAFSA application process with their parents. Now, if a student falls in one of these six categories that I'm going to list, then they would be considered an independent. One, they're 24 years old or older. Two, married three, have children or other dependents, four, be a orphan or ward of the court, five, be a veteran of the military, or six, be homeless. So if a student does not fall in one of those six categories, then they're considered a dependent. Now this is especially important because both the parents as well as the students will need to create an FSA ID. This is in essence a login that both parties will create to have access to the FAFSA application. I've hosted workshops where just a parent would come or just a student would come and when you don't have both parties present, you're not able to finish the application. So make sure it's a priority that both parties are available when filling out this application. Number three, apply early. The FAFSA application opens annually on October 1st and the deadline is June 30th. However, it's in your best interest to submit your FAFSA application in the fall versus the spring. One, because then you maximize your opportunity to be awarded all the different grants that are out there. And then two, you're able to compare your financial aid packages much earlier on than if you finish it later on. It's really in your best interest to do everything early. So those are three FAFSA mistakes that you should avoid. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, I would love it if you would share it. Tell me what the next topic I should cover for my next video. For more information, please check out my website, cosplaycounselor.com, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!